Welcome to the BBOC tailgate. We bet college football player props. I'm Tim Kalinowski, and sadly, I'm not with my partner, Mike Calabrese, today. Mike's dad passed away over the weekend, so for our listeners who know Mike, please keep him in your thoughts and prayers, him and his family. Mike is an incredible person. Uh, him and his dad used to just love to talk college football. Mike has become a dear friend of mine. He's the one who taught me how to bet college football player props, so... Followers of Mike's, uh, listen, he, you have no idea how generous and kind of a person he is. So we're all thinking of Mike. And with that, I've been talking to Calabrese all week, and uh, he would want the show to go on. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to try and keep us afloat here. We're 19-9-1 on the year. Last week was our first losing week. So I'm going to do my best to get us back on track. And I'm going to start with a running back out of the ACC, Syracuse's LaQuint Allen over 54 and a half rushing yards. Now, this might sound scary because the Orange are traveling to Tallahassee to face one of the best teams in the nation in Florida State. But one of the few weaknesses that the Seminoles have is their rush defense. Specifically, Syracuse has a clear edge in rush play explosiveness against Florida State's defense rush play explosives allowed. Virginia Tech's backs last week rushed for 129 yards on the Seminoles. And Clemson's a week prior, they went for 136. Allen is Syracuse's lead back, and he's more than capable of racking up yards on the ground. I think this number is also a bit deflated because Syracuse had to abandon the run game during their last two games because they were facing large deficits. The Orange want to shorten this game, and the way to do it is the ground attack with Allen. I think he leads the way. I'm going to stay in the ACC with this next one, and it's a wide receiver who made his season debut last week, North Carolina's Devontae Walker, over 54 and a half receiving yards. And if you don't know the story by now, North Carolina wide receiver, Tez Walker, he's a transfer from Kent State and North Carolina Central before that. However, the NCAA had blocked Walker from being eligible to play this season for the Tar Heels, citing uh, transfer rules. He had to basically sit out a year, but they appealed the whole thing. It was a whole to-do, a whole story, and the NCAA reversed that decision last week, so the highly touted whiteout was able to make his debut in that beautiful Carolina blue in the Tar Heels' blowout win over Syracuse, and in that game, Walker was tied for the team lead in targets with eight and posted six receptions for 46 yards. Now, that may sound underwhelming, but if you look at it this way, after sitting out the first four games of the season, Walker played 54 snaps against Syracuse, the first of which didn't come until Carolina's 18th offensive play. The guy didn't get to practice until Thursday before the game. He was barely a part of the game plan. But this week, heading into their matchup against Miami, he is a part of the game plan. Walker immediately becomes Drake May's most talented weapon, and this time, he actually gets to have a full week of practice. Look, we have an opportunity here to buy a blue chip stock at a discount. Tez Walker over 54 and a half receiving yards. I like it up to about 62 and a half. So let's close this out with one more play. We're going to go to the SCC. Texas A&M wide receiver Evan Stewart to go over 51 and a half receiving yards. Now, Calabrese bet and cashed on Stewart earlier this season. But since then, A&M's starting quarterback got knocked out for the season and Stewart suffered a lower body injury himself and had to miss a week. In the days leading up to A&M's game last week against Alabama, Stewart was seen in a walking boot, but he did indeed suit up and play. Now, all this sounds terrible, right? Awful. Well, now there's value because at this point, the Aggies have no choice but to get the ball into the hands of one of the best wide receivers in America. The reports out of Aggieland are that the injury to Stewart wasn't nearly as bad as it was initially thought to be, so much so that Jimbo made a point after the Alabama game to say this, we have to get the ball in Evans' hands. There's no doubt about it. He's got to touch it. Your playmakers have to touch it, and Evan is certainly one of them. He went a step further and revealed that Stewart was the primary target on six plays in the second half of that Alabama game, but the ball didn't go to him. We've got to get the ball in one's hands, says Jimbo. Uh, you think Stewart's going to get the ball this week? Regardless, 
They're going to do their absolute best to get the ball to him. And with just needing 52 yards to cash, I'll take my chances. Evan Stewart, Texas A&M, over 51 and a half receiving yards. That'll do it for us. Just three plays from me. All the best to Mike Calabrese. Make sure you catch all the BBOC action, especially tomorrow morning, Saturday morning with BBOC Live. Catch you next week.